Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. So we're back on the LeBlanc lathe restoration project today. Uh, we've got the machine leveled now in our last uh, episode, and it's really time now to go ahead and really start putting it back together. So uh, as far as the cross slide, uh, the saddle, the, all the controls on the front, we've got all that stuff pretty much ready to go back on. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the machine uh, ready for those. So to start with, uh, the first thing we need to do is, is in the process, we remove the rack uh, that goes up underneath uh, the, the ways here. And basically that's what uh, you crank when you crank is what moves the, the whole saddle back and forth. So we're going to get that put back on. Uh, then I believe I'm going to have to probably go do my homework, make sure I'm doing this in right order. But I believe what we're going to do is go ahead and take the apron, uh, put that on here or the, the front part and then the saddle. The part that goes across the waves will come on top of that and it'll all bolt together and uh, hopefully we'll have it ready to go. So let's get going. So here's the rack and uh, we've got all this cleaned up. There's basically two um, pins on either side that go into some holes that are drilled in here and that aligns everything up and there's four um, socket cap screws in here that uh, will all go in place. So. So we got to get this where it's based. Both ends have got to kind of start at the same time to get going. I think that's actually going. Let's see if I can. Whoops. Maybe not. Let's see if we can. Uh, I think what we can do, it looks like it's going to be stubborn going on, but um, hopefully what I can do is go ahead and get a couple of these uh, socket cap screws in here to kind of hold it in place. And uh, once we do that, hopefully we can tighten it in. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the trick. Let me get them all going here. All right, that one's all the way. That one's all the way. That one's all the way. And that one's all the way. The rack is installed. It's up tight against the back. I can feel it. There's no gap in there. So we're good to go. Well guys, about right now is when I could really use an extra hand. Uh, I have to get this uh, apron here mounted back up on these rods and uh, this thing's heavy. And this is where my uh, engine hoist is really gonna come in handy here. I was sitting out here trying to figure out how I was gonna do this and all of a sudden it was like ding, ding, ding. Hey dummy, you got a engine hoist. Uh, let's make use of this, save your back. So we've got this, uh, kind of slung on here and what we're going to have to do is come over here and get these rods lined up and hopefully just kind of get it sliding right down through here. Uh, again, I think a extra set of hands would be real helpful about right now, but we don't have that. So we're going to make do with what we got. That's the one thing I don't like about an engine hoist is, is that those legs down here have to fit up under the lathe and of course, where one needs to be is right where there's a leg on the lathe. So uh, we're just going to have to probably swing it out a little bit to get it in here. I do need to come down with this um, a little bit. That's going to be good for right this minute. There is a keyway in one of these that I have to get lined up. There's a keyway on this other one I have to get lined up. 
So uh, having to pay attention to some of this stuff as I go on here. Put a little bit more tension back up on this now. I think right now okay I think I have that one lined up alright I think we've got all of our feed rods here kind of in uh, but I got a problem. Got a problem. It's not a major problem. Uh, let me bring you around this side over here and I'll show you what's going on. So we've got everything lined up. There's four rods on here, but the final one actually goes through this little boss hanging out the end. And this is hanging down over the, the chip pan and it's just not going to slide up. I can't get it up high enough to kind of get it over the hump. So I think what I'm going to do is there's just a couple of bolts holding this piece on. It'll come off. And uh, once we get it on, we can put it back on. So that'll be the game plan. I've got the apron onto the rods now. And right now it's just resting on a piece of wood up underneath it. So all the weight's not on the rods. And uh, it's uh, stable. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it kind of where it's at right now. We're going to go get the saddle, bring the saddle, drop it on here. And uh, hopefully it's all going to go back together without too much trouble. So I've got the saddle um, here hanging from the uh, engine hoist, uh, similar to before. I've already got this painted up, cleaned up. I did it off camera, guys. You've seen the process. Uh, you know, we went through here, we soaked it down with the citrus strip, let it sit overnight, came out, scraped it off, used a wire wheel, cleaned it up, uh, painted it. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same process you've already seen. Uh, so this is all painted, ready to go back on. Uh, we've just got it hanging here from some slings. I'm going to push this over. Uh, we'll set it down on the ways. And uh, then we get the fun part of trying to get the uh, apron lined up with the saddle and uh, get it all bolted together. So let's bring this on in. I think I'm going to go ahead and get some oil and squirt on those ways first. Go ahead and squirt down the inside here. Can't have too much oil on these things. All right. Normally I would use whey oil for this. Right now I'm just using a light machine oil for just getting things assembled. Uh, we will go back and put whey oil on this later on. Uh, but right now it's just a light machine oil. Let's uh, get this lined up. See if I can uh, gently let this down. All right, hang on a minute. Up. Oh. My uh, straps here are actually sitting on the ways, so what I'm gonna have to do is uh, probably block this up and pull those out and we'll have to drop it down a little bit at a time so let's see what we need to do so i just uh put those on some blocks of wood here left over from my ceiling and i should be able to manhandle this enough to get them up and on here so now what I need to do is get this kind of lined up with the uh, carriage up underneath it. All right, guys, we got the saddle more or less sitting on here. It's up a little bit right now because we got to get everything lined up. There's a pin right 
beneath my finger that actually goes down through here. Then there's three uh, cap head screws that will pull everything up. There's also a key that's milled all the way down. So what I'm gonna attempt to do here is I got a pry bar and uh, we kind of need to pull the carriage up and in and I'm going to just manhandle this. All right, I felt like that pin kind of dropped on there. Uh, these holes are somewhat lined up. I'm gonna see if I can get them started. Well, here it is. All right, and that's actually gonna line up right there. Now, I'm just gonna visually look and make sure I've got these keyways lined up. That one is in line. This one is also it hasn't engaged yet, but it's going to be in line when it does engage. So let's go ahead and snug that up a little bit. All right, that's in there. That's home. Okay, so now I'll block the wood out from down there with any luck at all our carriage look at there just like it's supposed to don't you just love it when a plan comes together all right she is starting to look like a lathe again wow that is smooth i got just a little bit of oil on there but that is just gliding effortlessly across here, which is just what we want. Again, this is just machine oil. Um, whey oil is a little bit thicker, so it kind of stays on the ways. You know, it's, it's really not that critical. Oil is, from a standpoint of lubrication, oil is oil, but whey oil will tend to, like I say, it has a little more binding power. It'll stick in there a little bit better. Just make sure this will go all the way down. That's as far as it goes. It's actually hitting a stop right there. Man, that feels good. I mean, look at it. That just, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it actually will have a stop that will keep it from coming off the rack but it's not on there right now, so that looks good. We're ready to start reassembling uh, the bracket down here on the end that holds all these rods in place. Uh, first thing I wanna do is just swipe them down real good. It's all a little grease on them. And uh, just wanna make sure we got everything good and clean to start with. And the first piece that's gonna go on here is this little, uh, piece right here and it's going to fit onto this rod and uh, I'm just going to leave it loose right now but what this is, is this is a carriage stop and you can uh, actually tighten this down somewhere on the carriage so if you're doing repetitive uh, uh, things on the lathe you can actually tighten this up and when the the cross slide comes out to a certain point it touches this and it will actually stop it so this is just something you can adjust there's actually a fine adjust on the carriage itself, uh, but for right now, it doesn't matter. It just needs to be on there. Next thing we need to put on here are these little pieces, and these again are some more uh, stops, and you'll see how this works. We showed it before, but this, uh, when you engage and disengage this, it has a certain travel in it. And these little uh, block stops, whatever you want to call them, come on here, and uh, they fit up. And there's a taper pin that's been drilled that goes down through here. I need to put the back one on. Now, because these were drilled on the lathe, probably by hand, uh, as after it was assembled, um, it's only, only one of them is going to fit. So, I mean, because they're basically these holes are, are pretty much unique to each one. 
that one's not wanting to go on at all. Let's see if this one here, I can't really tell. Actually, I think this one is the one that goes back here anyway. It's tight. Let me uh, clean these up a little bit better. That's the top side. All right. Yeah, just got a little rough spot right there. Let's see if I can actually, yeah, move that where, adjust it where it's, I can hammer it in there. All right, that's got that one in place, which is good. So now uh, the bracket is actually ready to go up on here. This one will go on afterwards. So let me go grab the bracket and uh, we'll slide her up on there. I'm going to start by just uh, lubing all these rods up a little bit. And here's the, the bracket. Each one of these uh, shafts line up in here. And we had to bump this off when we put a block of wood and probably gonna have to do the same thing here to get it back on so all right let's see if this thing will tap on now this is just an alignment pin back here this one is all right, it's coming. Uh, all right, that's pretty close to where it's going to go. All right, so. Let me uh, get my screws and we'll see if we can tighten this up. thrust bearing that goes up here uh, and finally uh, we got our last little uh, collar down here that needs to go back on right there and drive that pin home that pretty well should have the little bracket back down here installed so we should be good to go now Next step we want to do here is uh, put the clamps that go up underneath this uh, this carriage. So the saddle up here on the top is just sitting on top of the ways. Uh, but we've also got a set of clamps that kind of come in here and capture that from the bottom so that it can't lift up. So you got a little step here, it can't lift up. And the other thing that this does is uh, these holes are actually drilled out oversized so that it kind of floats on there. And you've got these two screws behind it where you can adjust the tightness going into it. Uh, and there's a similar thing on the back side. It's a little bit different actually, but it captures it again. But this allows you to adjust uh, how tight this piece is rubbing up against that. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this in. Uh, and I'm just gonna, right now, we're just gonna kind of finger snug these uh, two bolts up on the bottom and now I'm going to come in here and we will adjust these screws in and get it probably what I'm going to do is kind of tighten down on it 
tight where it won't move and then just back off of that just a little bit because we want to get it as tight as we can um, without actually capturing it. So, all right, that's a little bit tight right there. And I'm still tightening these up and I can feel it. It's getting snug now. Uh, it's still not where I can't move the carriage. Uh, but it's definitely getting tight and uh, I kind of like that. I'm going to back them off just a touch. And I think I will kind of squirt a little oil up in there. All right, I like that. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, give me a wrench and tighten those up on the bottom. All right, I got these snugged up. They were a little aggravating to get started. I did them mostly off camera, but uh, we're ready to adjust the front now. Go ahead and tighten that in. And that's about as tight as it'll go. And that's a little bit too tight. Back off just a touch. Yeah, that makes a difference. I like that. So we can go ahead now and tighten up the bottoms real good. All right. So this little stud right here will be where the uh, thread dial goes or thread gauge for threading. And uh, I've still got to get that cleaned up and ready to go back on here, but it just slides up on there and uh, tightens up on the end and it can swing out uh, to engage the, the lead screw. All right, let's go around the back side and get the uh, bracket on the back that holds it uh, in place. Well, we're on the back side of the machine now and uh, similar to the front, we kind of need to have something here to kind to let keep the whole saddle from coming up. So everything's sitting down the ways and what we got here is this bar uh, and it comes in on the back. There's two screws here uh, that attach this and then similar to the front, there's some little adjustment screws that you can tighten this up. And basically all we're doing is just sandwiching it down. Um, it's on the front way, it's basically holding it where it can't move uh, this in and out at all. Uh, so all we're doing on the back is just being able to keep from lifted up. So got a couple of uh, socket cap screws here and these uh, go in. Whoop. There we go. That one started. All right, I'm just tightening this up just enough to kind of get it in place. And if you look, these um, are put, holes are drilled oversized. So there's actually some play in here. And uh, that's where those screws on the bottom going up. Uh, we'll tighten this in place. So let me go grab those and uh, we'll get those put in. So just like on the front, we got these same screws, but in this case, um, there's two holes right here. One in the front, one in the back. And um, I'll just tighten up. It will catch the bottom lip of this uh, little adjustment piece. And the other one in here in the back. All right, we just want that up tight enough. There's no upward movement here. All right. And then we'll tighten these up and that'll lock it in place. All right, that is installed. 
Next thing I want to do here is put the uh, wipers back on. So this is just a little block here. And if you look on the back side of it, um, there's some felt on the inside and then there's actually a little rubber piece. And what this does is it does two things. Number one, the, the, the felt piece will actually wick the oil um, into onto the way. So as this thing goes back and forth, it kind of wipes it and keeps a little, uh, wipes a fresh coat of oil on there. And then the little rubber piece on the front protects it and uh, basically will keep any trash from getting up underneath it. So uh, these just uh, screw in place. Um, I thought real hard or considered real hard um, replacing the felt in these. But uh, quite honestly, once I got them apart and looked at the felt, the felt was in pretty dang good shape. I just didn't see the, the need in doing it, so uh, I opted to just leave them alone. Um, no need to do it if it's not necessary, so these will just tighten up in place. There's actually a little oil, uh, little spring-loaded oil hole right here where you can oil this and that will soak that felt uh, lining in there. Uh, where it, again, we'll just wipe it as it goes back and forth. We got some on the back and on the other places. I'll go ahead and get them all put on. So there they are installed and everything looks like it's working good. And with that, we pretty much have the, at least the bottom half of the uh, cross slide or the carriage here all reassembled. So that I think will be a wrap on this particular episode. Uh, we're making good progress on getting this all back together. Like I said, we have the whole uh, cross slide or the carriage here all well back together. Everything seems to be working good, um, looks good. Uh, one other little thing that I did off camera, more just aesthetics. I, once I got to working on this, I got to where all of my handles on here were polished uh, uh, steel. And what I did was I, I actually put these on a Scotch-Brite wheel and polished them up and then coated them with a, a clear coat. And I said, you know, my knobs up here were all painted black and they just didn't match. So I pulled all these off and kind of did the same treatment there. And I, I think it really kind of makes it set, set off a little bit better. It's gonna look a little bit nicer. And also I think it just, it just feels better to the touch, at least it does to me, so. Uh, but with, other than that, uh, you know, we're to a good stopping point. Uh, Next time we're gonna start basically putting the, uh, the cross slide on here and the, uh, the compound, getting all that set back up. We also have to get the taper attachment back on. And uh, anyway, that'll be coming up in our next episode. Uh, getting closer and closer. Uh, once that's done, I think all we really have left to do is to uh, get the tailstock done. I uh, gotta put some gears and covers on the other end down here get some belts on here and do the electrical and, and I think we'll be ready to fire this puppy up. So anyway, making progress, hope to have it running soon. Thanks for watching guys and uh, we'll catch you on the next time.